Welcome to Raw and Real Entrepreneurship, the show that dares to bring the no-nonsense insight to those who have the courage to start, grow, and scale a business. Here is your host, entrepreneur, investor, and best-selling author, Susan Sly. Well, hey, what is up, Raw and Real Entrepreneurs, wherever you are in the world? I hope you're having an amazing day. And, you know, this show, we talk about all sorts of topics, the courage to start a business, the courage to stay in business. And recently, one of the listeners stopped me and we were having this conversation and they just thanked me because it has given them the courage to stay the course, stay in business. And I just want to say shouts out to Miss Tony, who I saw at a wedding in Dallas. And I really appreciated that. So my guest today and I are going to have um, a lot of fun talking about all sorts of different topics from entrepreneurship to tech, the future of tech. Is the world ending because of AI? And so um, I would say a couple of things. One, uh, I know some of you are on the treadmill running. You may want to replay this one and take some notes. Uh, Number two, I always love a great review. And if I do read your review on the show, then you can get a $50 Amazon gift card. So how fun is that? So, And uh, by all means, if you want to take that gift card, and donate it to a charity of your choice, you can do that too. But let's get the party started. My guest today is the founder of Tetra Noodle Technologies. Now, it doesn't get cooler than that name. I'm sorry. He's a business mentor. He's a leading authority on AI and machine learning. And uh, he has four patents. And at Radius, uh, we have patents. And um, I'm very familiar with patent applications. But we're not going to talk about that today. Don't worry. He's an author. And he is a podcast host. He started his career at the age of 15, working in a factory and earning $2 a day. While he had no contacts or resources, he was determined to improve his life, with hard work and his insatiable curiosity. I love that insatiable curiosity to learn new concepts. He continued to make stellar progress today. He is a entrepreneurial leader and um, his company Tetra noodle technologies is a premium data science and AI consulting company. He has been listed amongst the world's AI leaders by the Miami Dade college. He's also a board advisor to many startups, accelerators, and entrepreneurs entrepreneurship circles. And in his career, which, you know, if you see him in person, I don't know how he's done this much when he looks like he's about um, 25. Um, in his in his life with over 25 plus years of industry experience, he has built valuations of over half a billion dollars. And uh, he he's just nonstop, but most importantly to everything, in addition to being a great human, He's a dad to two sons. So Manoush Agrawal, welcome to Rod Real Entrepreneurship. I'm so excited to have you here. Thank you so much for that lovely introduction. Thank you. So Manoush, I want to just jump right in. And first question off the bat, what was your first business and how did you start it? All right. <laughs> it's it's going to sound a little bit embarrassing, but this, this, this happened in grade 10. Uh, this was like more than three decades ago. So I always had like, you know, this this uh, notion that I could uh, look at people's problems and try to solve it. And um, back then in grade 10, I was super skinny, very, very skinny to the extent that I couldn't even find like, you know, good fitting clothes. And I looked around and a number of my friends had the same problem. So I said, okay, you know, there must be a good way to, you know, gain some weight quickly. And I found a sketchy, sketchy, um, you know, like a homemade kind of remedy to gain weight. I, at that point, at that time, I didn't realize it was so, like it could have gone really wrong. But it was something, some, uh, some, uh, you know, some natural occurring substance that increases the 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 amount of water that your body absorbs, and you just like balloon up within within you know weeks, and so. I bought that and I sold it to my friends. Um, you know, a few people f- tried it, but then you know, as as quickly as you gain the weight, you lose the weight like right away. So uh, that was my first business. You know, I, I think I broke even, but uh, after I saw what happens to the body, you know, I just stopped right away. So that that's what. 
You know, it's so funny. We've had, um, you know, one of the founders I interviewed, his first business was selling watermelons and he sang yep. the song Watermelon Man and the Watermelon Man. And we've had so many different stories. Mm -hmm. um, some have repeated. That is the first time I've ever heard that story. Yeah. And and entrepreneurship, like you said, it's it's about seeing a problem, figuring out a way to solve a problem and having the courage to yeah. go and take that action. So what was your second business? Second business, um, so I've tried many, you know, um, as I was getting into the internet age, like I was looking at how people are making money online. Uh, so I started dating websites um, and I started an eBay store for selling sporting sporting goods uh, because I belong to a city in India where which is well known the uh, you know the world over for very very high quality sporting goods so i used to import them and i used to sell them on ebay that was like a decent business it did well for a couple of years but then as you know you know unless you are in retail you know how to manage inventory costs and things like that uh, it, you know i got uh, priced out by people who were selling way way cheaper and so you, you learn these lessons as you go through these multiple businesses about different industries. And, you know, it's very easy to get in, but it's kind of difficult to sustain. What? So going, you know, thinking about like online business, um, I, I had a, an online business in 1995, mm. right? When the internet is just kind of burgeoning. So I was yeah, one yeah. of the first health and wellness coaches with mm -hmm. a paid online site nice, and a recurring nice. membership fee in 95. What year yeah. was your first internet business? Uh, around 2001, around that time frame. So yeah. early. Yeah. What did you, so I'm sure that you had some critics and maybe your family saying, you know, what, what are you doing? What is this internet thing? And what did you see? Because one of the things you're known for is being a bit of a futurist, especially when it comes to technology. So what did you see about the internet that maybe other people weren't seeing at the time? Um, you know, the, the thing is that uh, at some level, I didn't realize it, but I had a hunch that um, business is all about networking. Business is all about communication. How, how do you find those people who have the problem? How do you find the solutions? How do you like sort of, you know, utilize technology to create a, a some sort of automated system, supply chain or whatever. And all of these things were coming together. You know, you, you could find people on eBay who, who were looking for a particular item and you can source that item through the internet um, from the manufacturer. You can, uh, you know, get it shipped to a warehouse and then, you can ship it one by one in a, in a in a package all of those things all those components were there so i just had to figure out a sustainable cycle that continues and uh, you know feeds the profit back into the business because because i knew that is basic definition of a business and um, the idea was to create a passive income so that i can sort of you know uh, free up my time to spend uh, first with my family second on more like you know futuristic ideas which i knew could uh, change the game for a lot of other people so that was uh, that has been my sort of quest to to create a system to generate passive income and then utilize my time on more uh, you know uh, futuristic uh, sort of endeavors mm, i love it and yeah. that it if thinking about too i mean um in Radius, we have an office in Bangalore, right? So the um, I get to work with amazing people from India. We also have an office in Turkey, and you know, people from different areas where the internet wasn't, you know, where it was. Say in America, it was still behind. And yeah, yeah. and I want to commend you, Manoush, because you saw something that other people didn't see. So let me ask you this: What are some of the problems you're seeing now? That if someone was listening to the show, wherever they are in the world whether it's India or Nigeria, that you would say these are problems that someone could begin to solve and begin to create money, but maybe with not a lot of startup capital. What are some things you're seeing? Yeah, see, um, right now, uh, there, are, there are a lot of people losing hope. Uh, they're uh, in despair. Um, you know, a yeah. uh, lot of... Um, a uh, lot of uh, sort of negative uh, feeling towards a certain group of people, LGBTQ, uh, you know, f female entrepreneurs. Um, uh, 
people are not listening to each other that's why we have so much conflict um, in the world and if you go on a website like fiverr you can actually earn hundreds of dollars per hour just listening to people you just don't have to do anything just log into zoom and people will just like spill out their guts and you know they they want some somebody to talk to so the environment is changing we have gone through a huge uh, sort of upheaval in the, in the in the, at a global level and now people are settling down so i won't say uh, there is anything complicated other than just try to observe what people are yearning for they may not even say it out loud that i need somebody to talk to but you know what are they yearning for and then um, try to empathize with their um, needs and you'll find so many opportunities so many opportunities the second thing is uh what second thing is like with so many opportunities a lot of people make the mistake of following other people's paths meaning they say oh you know that person um he did this business e-commerce amazon whatever whatever that business is and he bought a mercedes he bought a bmw in like 6 months i'm going to do that whereas they don't realize their heart and soul is not in it so they keep going in circles trying to find that next big thing uh, rather than focusing on okay these are the 10 options in front of me what resonates with me the most what fulfills me that's what i want to get into because entrepreneurship as you know is difficult it's challenging every day there's a new challenge so unless and until you are really into it you're like this is what you're meant to be um you're going to give up very quickly so mm-hmm. so that's one thing i always say that you know really learn to l- l- listen to other people also listen to yourself mm. that's beautiful what a, listen to what people are yearning for and to your point the i agree wholeheartedly there's this this such a disconnect where people have stopped not everyone but in there's a certain sense that people have stopped having empathy they've stopped listening to others and it's it's become a bit of a screaming match it's like mm-hmm. hear me hear me hear me and what i hear you saying is that there's always opportunity if you're willing to pause and listen right even look at um jay shetty as an example he's built a you know an amazing podcast best selling author and and really just listening to what people are saying in terms of feeling hopeless feeling frustrated and so i love i love that i think that's that's a phenomenal idea from your vantage point now that we're living in very interesting times and so let's go in the time machine so you're on the internet in 2001 and then 2008 facebook hits hard so we you know people could do you know one post on facebook and they could um get a bunch of sales in their business or they could run dollar a day facebook ads and they could you know get this massive traction and then it went from a blue ocean where there were you know there was a small amount of content and a large amount of voracious people look at that content to a significant amount of content significant amount of people it's more like a red ocean so social media is going through a massive massive upheaval changes regulations for tiktok um even you know in the news Z- zuckerberg is in the news and elon musk is in the news so as a futurist manoj what would you say social media is going to look like 5 years from now yeah great question so you know whenever you want to look at the future and predict which is kind of impossible but just uh, project what is going to happen the best thing to do is look at the past so um if we look at the history of uh, information and communication uh, it used to be very very uh, scarce and very expensive to acquire information let's even talk about the books so printing press was invented maybe 700 years ago before that everything even the bible used to be written by hand and you had to employ a person for months to be able to replicate a book right mm-hmm. so it was only affordable by kings and queens after the uh printing press it became a little bit more um accessible but still you know not a common person could buy like you know in year 2000 i had to pay 50 dollars per book 
uh, you know, this is year 2000 and I was not able to afford all the books I, I wanted. And now today there is no such thing. Like I can just go to Google and type anything in the world, like the weirdest thing that I can think of. I want to learn. I can type it in on YouTube. So the history of information is that we went from scarce to abundant information. Information is going to exponentially explode. Uh, and, and we have been seeing that. So the format of the information will continue to change. Uh, it went from written to digital to now video is, is, is you know, as we are recording it, audio video. And uh, tomorrow there's going to be, uh, you know, um, metaverse and, and uh, AR, VR, all. Of, so the format of how we produce and consume information is going to continue to explode as humanity, you know, uh, uh, discovers new and new ways of communicating. The things that will shift is, from abundance to quality, because when you have limited quality, even the low uh, limited quantity, even the low quality stuff will surface, will be visible. But with abundance, you have competition. So high quality will survive. You know, it will no longer be, uh, okay, look at me. I'm so good. It'll be like, okay, you know, this is what I can do for you. And this is how good I do the things that I do for you. And if you are genuine, if you are consistent, then you will be able to stand out. Otherwise, it's going to be really difficult to, uh, you know, stand out in, in that ocean. And what is your sense in terms of this debate with AI driven content? So Google's it's, it's like this, there is a, an AI battle happening where Google's, this is not explaining to you, Manoush, because you and I would have coffee and we'd, we'd geek out and talk about yeah. this, but for the everyday listener. So Google's AI is being trained to identify content written by AI. And there's a company, Jasper AI, that just got a, a, a $1.5 billion valuation. It's a little AI tool that I've used, you know, and you just feed in a little bit of text and it'll spit out a whole blog post or whatever. So there's an AI battle happening, as you said, from abundance to quality. So what, in your opinion, is going to happen with regard to AI created content with versus human created content. Yeah, um, so uh, let's just step back a little bit and talk about AI as a tool. Um, before the advent of AI, you know, we have invented so many machines, so many discoveries have been made. Everything that has been uh, done technologically has to enhance our physical abilities. Meaning the car was invented to make us go faster. The crane was invented to help us lift uh, heavier weights. It's all about our physical abilities. Uh, AI is the only uh, invention that is going to increase our cognitive abilities. Not only that, uh, you know, we are we well are aware that uh, the, at the rate AI is uh, is getting smarter and better, it is going to surpass human. Uh, uh, human intelligence very soon and that point is called singularity so um so once again if you look at history even the production of that data was very slow so as i said uh information used to be copied ha by hand uh, you know it used to be uh, passed on from generation to generation in stories but now machines can produce that data so Again, I'm nobody to predict this, but I believe that Google is on a shaky ground because their whole premise is to synthesize the information that was produced by human beings, mm -hmm. right? And now th that paradigm is no longer applicable because information is going to be produced primarily by AI, mm -hmm. right? So now, uh, you know, just like you, you, you look at the wars, you know, one nation invents one, uh, one, um, a weapon, the other nation has to invent the bigger one. So my prediction is in the next 10, 12 years, um, you know, you'll see a different way of synthesizing information. And the, the biggest evidence of this is, you know, uh, a company like Facebook, which had reached a, about trillion dollar uh, evaluation, they changed their name from Facebook to Meta. So that's telling you something that where, you know, the, the, the people in the know, where do you think the industry is going? Right. Mm -hmm. So no longer we will consume information in text format. No longer we will consume information in on a blog written somewhere because it takes a lot of time and energy to write it. Uh, you know, not everybody can write eloquently, but 
now with ai everybody can become a writer and share their thoughts and not only that as a, a species we are getting more and more demanding in the richness of the content that we want uh, you know we do no longer want to read the only way is to read but we want experiential um, you know like a uh, uh, content where you can literally describe how eiffel tower looks like and i can like be there with you i mean that's the future Mm -hmm. And um, I love how you broke it down because that singularity, that surpassing, and a lot of people are afraid of it. And um, stepping outside of the, the conversation for a moment as a co-founder of an AI company, these are the conversations we're having every day. And so at Radius, we said, um, Manoush, that we will be human-centric AI and we will use our computer vision AI to empower the humans that want to be there in those locations. And, and so from that vantage point that we look at it and say, AI has a lot of very useful implications and we are, they're, they're, they're infinite. That could be like a whole other topic of conversation, but something you brought up about Google is on shaky ground. And we would say, you know, and you also spoke about meta and meta is really interesting. So Manoush and I are about to geek out. So I just want everyone <laughs> to come along with us on this little journey because the, there are people who use Facebook daily for their social media. And I had a period of time where I, I, I had a staff just posting and doing stuff. And then I went back into my Facebook personal page and there were still all of these avid people managed like happy birthday, so-and-so, and this is my new puppy and, and everything. And there's this misperception that that was always uh, Mark Zuckerberg and Facebook's endgame goal, which it wasn't because when they acquired Oculus I believe it was in 2016 or no 2014, they were going into the metaverse. And some people have said with the crash of crypto, oh, the metaverse isn't going to happen. But you said the people in the know. So let's take a journey into the metaverse. So in your opinion, is the metaverse still going to happen? And if so, what is the near future look like with metaverse technologies? You know, um, it is going to happen for sure. Um, so um, the 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 technology and human existence have have always merged, always merged. We tend to think that oh, you know, um, these are separate things. Human life should exist outside of this technological bubble. But can you imagine your life without wheel, without a wheel? There is no life without a wheel today. You know, mm -hmm. even though we existed. With, with, before the invention of the wheel, you know, life was, uh, you know, progressing, but today it has become part and parcel of our life. We cannot even imagine life without it, without fire, without, you know, a whole bunch of things. So when we think about AI, yes, it is going to become more powerful. It is going to do the things that we find boring or mundane or repetitive. In that environment, uh, you know, AI will actually support us to be entertained, to connect with each other, to you know, create these virtual worlds. And as explorers, as as people who are always curious, you know, we want to see what is out there. You know, how can I experience something even without actually being there or whatever? So in that scenario, yes, metaverse is going to happen. Now, what will be the shape and form of the metaverse? I don't know because I think right now we are going through like the VHS versus versus the beta uh, uh, videotape format uh, fight. What metaverse will look like? In my opinion, if you tell somebody, "Hey, you're gonna have to wear this like helmet-looking thing uh, for the rest of your life for 24 hours a day to exist in this world," that's not gonna really take off. So what we really need is uh, you know. Things like Neuralink, which I, Elon Musk is working on, where you know you are directly connecting to the to the human thoughts and uh, you know uh, engaging uh, technology through a common bridge. So, life existence is not something uh, that will need external gadgets. It's like Wi-Fi; it's there. You know, it's just like whenever you want to hook in, just hook in. So. That's where I think technology will take us. Um, it's still far um, from, from the truth, maybe five, 10 years, maybe 20 years, but that's where I think we are going. 
Absolutely. I agree with you hundred percent. And, and what the average non-tech person doesn't understand, there are all sorts of issues with things like latency video processing. So right now, for example, if, if you're going to process real time video from multiple camera streams, you're going to use an edge server and GPUs. Um, but it, I was doing a, a talk at the AI at the edge summit in Santa Clara. And one of the other speakers was the head of metaverse technologies for meta. And he he did such a beautiful job. His name is VJ. He did such a beautiful job talking about connectivity issues. And, and for everyone, you know, thinking about the near future, we are going to wear these glasses, but just like outside your home, you might not have the best Wi-Fi connectivity. How would you connect to the metaverse if you can't even connect to the internet? So there are a lot of blockers in this path. And uh, my friend is building Manoush, the data center for the metaverse, his company is. And so he has shared with me just some different things that he is allowed to share. Um, but you know, that at Meta, they already have meetings internally with their staff in virtual offices in the metaverse. And so, and, you know, there are all sorts of implications that are going to happen, but it's inevitable. And that people also need to understand that it isn't necessarily about Shiba Inu or Dogecoin or even Bitcoin, that the, the, the currency of the metaverse is also going to be a metaverse currency, whatever that looks like. And so it is inevitable. So, we started this conversation with problems to solve. Entrepreneurs solve problems. And you're consulting to these companies on AI and ML and how AI can empower them, which it, I love. And that's absolutely awesome. So let me ask you a different question. Now we're in the time machine from early internet when you started to now. So if you were the age you were then and looking at the metaverse, the way you looked at the internet, what kind of business might you think about starting? Um, Not a weight gainer business in the metaverse. <laughs> yeah. Well, well, I will, I will, here is what I will su suggest. Uh, again, you know, uh, if I, uh, cause I have gained significant experience as well since then. So I will try to, uh, you know, uh, use that wisdom now. Uh, what I will do is I will say I'm, in a particular location, in a physical location in the world, I will go out there and experience some physical uh, life and I will digitize it and I will upload it in a way so that you can also experience the same life sitting at any place that you are. Mm -hmm. Meaning people are fond of cuisines. I'll go taste different cuisines. And if the metaverse can like really... Uh, be powerful enough, I can transfer over all the emotional things that I'm experiencing, including the taste of the cuisine I'm experiencing and have you experience the same thing. It's almost like the matrix thing. Remember where, you know, um, you wanted to learn certain things and they just pop in a, a floppy disk and then you, you became an expert at that. So something along those lines. I think that's where we are going to be in a few years. Yes. And it's, it as much as the people fear it. One of my good friends is Dr. Brenda Wiederholt, and she is the um, leading expert in using VR technologies to treat people with PTSD and depression. Mm -hmm. And it's, and it's so beautiful what she's doing. And I think that, that if, Anything that's, some people react to fear, Manoj, and I know you talk about these things on your show, that they get excited and they do it. And some people react to fear and they cower. And my message has always been consistent about the metaverse is it's inevitable. I was doing a keynote for MIT earlier this year. And I said, if something's inevitable, why don't you embrace it and figure out a way to use it for good? Yeah. And something I'm excited about. So I'm going to ask you a final question about the metaverse. So the, I've never been to Singapore. I've been to 35 countries, but never Singapore. So Singapore is creating a digital twin of the city, which would mean that I would get to travel to digital Singapore check it out and everything, and then decide if 
real Susan, not avatar Susan wants to go to real Singapore. Mm -hmm. And I'm excited about those possibilities of being, I love to travel, but being able to sort of experience before the experience and, mm -hmm, and just mm -hmm. feel it. And that's just for me, something that's awesome. And, and the other thing that I'm also excited about are people who have what some would call disabilities and imagine if you've never run being able to run in the metaverse. And it, it, I get chills as a, a mother of a child with a disability. And so those are things I'm excited about. What are you excited about, about the metaverse? Yeah, I mean, these are the things, see, um, as I said earlier, like technology helps us do things that was not possible before, right? Mm -hmm. The problem is that our, our human mind is always limited to what it, what it is today, and what it used to be in the past, and then maybe 10% more imagination on top of that. Um, so we can say, hey, you know, uh, oh, we can, uh, you know, in case of um, people with disability, or, you know, we, we, the technology exists to help them, uh, you know, be more mobile, like uh, with, with certain gadgets. But you can think that we are putting the limitation on our physical abilities. The, everything that we experience is right here in our mind. So if we just say, okay, you know, as you said, like if we can put somebody in a state of mind where they can't even they can't even like differentiate between the physical limitations versus the, what they are experiencing in the mind. I could go to Jupiter, and if as long as my mind thinks I am on Jupiter, I am going to be on Jupiter. That's just the reality of it. You know, a lot of people um, we tend to think you know the reality is different than what our imagination is, but truly. You know, as, as you said, like uh, uh, somebody who's curing PTSD, it's just all a state of mind. And with artificial intelligence and all these technologies, look at it this way. We already live in that world right now. Our worldview is already formed by the information that we are consuming. And most of the information is controlled by AI algorithms today, right? So our worldview is already there. We just have to add the experiential uh, component to it and then we'll be free to, to experience whatever we want in this, in this world. Mm, that is beautiful. Well, Manoj, I, there are so many things I could ask you about, so we'll have to continue this. I know we're going to continue this conversation on your show. And uh, speaking of your show, I want everyone to check out Manoj's show, Bootstrapping Your Dreams. And um, the, so this is my bonus question, Manoj. Um, since you live in Vancouver, Canada, and I'm originally from Canada, um, have you been ever to a Tim Hortons? Absolutely, absolutely. Okay, what is your favorite Tim Timbit flavor? I like the the original one without a lot of uh, sweet uh, added on top of it. But my kids love the um, different flavors with the with the glaze on it. With yes, the, you know the chocolate and mm -hmm. yeah. <laughs> so we always get like a little bit of uh, plain Timbit for me, and then the rest the sweet ones for them. The glazed chocolate ones, yeah, delicious. Yeah. Mm. And so I this show is not sponsored by Tim Hortons, but anytime <laughs> yeah. that everyone knows because I've or, you know every anytime I have somebody who lives in Canada or is from Canada, we are going to have at least one Canadian topic because Canada is the second biggest list audience of the world for Ron Real Entrepreneurship. So shouts out to Timbits, everyone. If you don't know what a Timbit is, you can Google it or you can experience it in the metaverse when that happens yeah. um, with the digital twin of a Tim Hortons show, uh, Tim Hortons story. So many, anyway, thank you so much for being here. I appreciate you. I would encourage everyone to follow you on Instagram at uh, M-A-N-U-J- a G R O and Manuj's YouTube channel, M A N U J A G R O. And again, it's bootstrapping your dreams. So thank you again, Manuj, for being on Ron Real Entrepreneurship. Thank you so much. Thanks. Well, everyone, this has been another episode of Ron Real Entrepreneurship. And I want to thank you for stopping by. Don't forget to go and leave a review on iTunes. I do read all your reviews, me, not a staff member. And again, if I read your review on air, I am going to give you a $50 Amazon gift card. So with that, God bless, go rock your day. And I will see you in the next episode.